there's a thick unction of the Holy Ghost, and I think God just wants to minister. But for the sake of taking a text, Acts chapter 8 says in verse 4, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city but there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God and to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a title tonight, and it's this. I saw Satan fall. I saw Satan. Satan fall. Put your Bibles in your seats. Help me pray. Lord, God, tonight I ask that you would anoint the word of God. You said that if your word go forth, it would bring healing. You said if your word was preached, it would bring salvation. And Father, tonight we are praying that there would be healing and deliverance and salvation in this place. Let your anointing go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. Now, my title seems a little disconnected from my text but you will understand what I'm getting at in just a few minutes but I want to back up and discuss with you some principles about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of our adversary you understand there are two kingdoms at play in the universe today the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world understand that when God gets ready to build something he wants to first build the correct atmosphere go all the way back to the book of Genesis in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and upon the darkness and upon the deep and on the first day he made this the second day he made that the third day he spoke this and spoke that he spent more time when we read Genesis chapter 1 creating the atmosphere then he did creating those who would inhabit the atmosphere. The correct atmosphere is very, very, very important to God. And you will understand that from the beginning of time, Satan has desired to disrupt, to confuse, to discombobulate the atmosphere that God would want to set forth, an atmosphere that would bring spiritual life. Satan desires to disrupt that. Well, how do I know that? He is the prince of the power of the air. He attacks the atmosphere. He attacks where God wants to communicate and move in the spirit. He desires to dilute any move of God with carnality. We see this all the way back in Genesis chapter 3. He comes to Eve and he begins to talk to her. And he says unto her, If thou touchest the apple, would thou die? Well, of course not. God didn't say if you touched it, you would die. He said if you eat it, you would die. And he begins to have this dialogue with her. And she sees in talking with him how it was comely to look at, how it might taste good, how it might feed her and give her knowledge to be like God. First John tells us that that is the root of all sin, the lust of the flesh. She saw that it would feed her body. 
the lust of the eyes, she saw that it was good to look upon. And the pride of life, that it would give her wisdom and pride and make her like God. Satan desires to sift any move of God by diluting it with carnality. And we see that here in the text that I read to you tonight, how that he had built a stronghold in the area of Samaria through a man named Simon. How that through carnality he had built the stronghold using sorcery and witchcraft and all manners of other Satanism to build a kingdom or a principality as the New Testament would call it. Understand tonight that Satan has more plan than just demon possession. Demon possession is just a minuscule thing for Satan. What he really desires is to have principalities and strongholds in a region. Think about when Jesus went to cast the 5,000 devils out of the man named Legion. They didn't care they were going to be cast out of Legion necessarily. They just said, Lord, send us into the swine that we could stay here in this area where we have a stronghold, where we're comfortable, where we have a work going. Don't, 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 don't send us out of this principality. We see that in our world today. There are cities that have strongholds and principalities. I, I submit to you, every city has a stronghold or a principality. Some are more obvious than others. If I mention the name San Francisco, we immediately would identify the stronghold of homosexuality. If I said unto you the city of Chicago or of Memphis, you would immediately identify the stronghold of violence or murder. If I said unto you the city of Las Vegas, we would immediately no, we're dealing with the principality of gambling and of lust and of all manner of addiction. Satan works in regions and tries to build principalities. He, he comes in what looks to be a strong regiment in order and in unity. In fact, Jesus in Luke chapter 11 casted out a devil and they came to him and they said, Surely you are a son of Satan that you have the ability to cast out devils. And he said, no, this cannot be. For how would another devil fight another devil? For a house divided against itself cannot stand. He was not talking about the kingdom of God, although that applies. We should be unified or we will not stand. He is talking about the kingdom of Satan is unified, is organized, is regimented, appears as if it's ready to strike, appears as if it's ready to have great victory on its horizon. You will not find any place in scripture where one devil fights another devil. It's not there. They want to be unified for one purpose, to disrupt a move of God. Satan desires to attack the mind and to bring confusion. He is the author of of confusion. He is the father of lies and he desires to attack the individual believer's mind and deceive and he desires to use those believers that he's deceived or, or unbelievers that he's deceived to build a principality or a stronghold. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. One of my favorite passages of scripture, Paul begins to speak to the Corinthian church how that he had desired to speak to them with great boldness, but they criticized him, some of them did, because he spoke to them in boldness in writing, but he was meek and mild when he came to them in person. And he, he said, you criticized me because you are out of order, you are out of submission, you are deceived, there's been a stronghold built in your mind. He said, but we walk, though we walk after the flesh, you desired for me to come to you in great power in the flesh, but my weapons are not in the flesh. My weapons are mighty to God. They are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Wherefore, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus 
Christ. He said, you wanted me to come in great power in the flesh, but I don't have to come in great boasting power of flesh. I come to you in power of the Spirit, that the Spirit is able to cast down every imagination and every stronghold and principality and every high thing that it would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And so we see here, I mentioned to you how important atmosphere was. Sometimes God wants to make an atmospheric change. And so we see here in the city of Samaria, God had already planted seed here. Way back in John chapter 4, Jesus randomly looks at the disciples and says, I must needs go through Samaria. Why? Because there was a woman that he had an appointment with, that he had a date with destiny with, that he began to speak to her and minister to her, how that he was the living water, how that she had been with four husbands, and the man that she lived with now, who she said was her fifth husband, was not even her husband, but he said, if you will drink of me, I will give you satisfaction that no earthly man could ever give. I will give you life-giving water. I will give you satisfaction that never shall run dry. And she left their conversation and went and said, come see a man who told me all that ever I did. But somehow between that conversation and Acts chapter 8, this man named Simon was able to crop up and begin to wield great demonic power and build a principality or a stronghold. And we read here in this text, it said those that were scattered went forth. What does it mean they were scattered? It meant in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost was poured out and God began to build a great church in Jerusalem. But they began to be persecuted. And those that scattered from that persecution, what looked like a bad thing, what looked like Satan was going to destroy the church, what looked like it might be the end of what Jesus had come to do, was in fact, he scattered them and sent them to places that he had already prepared, that he had already visited, that he was ready to spoil principalities and powers. That's what it says in Corinthians, that Jesus made openly a show and spoiled all the principalities and powers of Satan. And so he, yes, he allowed persecution to come, but to scatter them to Samaria. And when they got to Samaria, God began to shift things. And this one who they thought was the power of God, this Simon the sorcerer, when they began to preach to them the name of Jesus, how that all power is in the name of Jesus, how that in that name you can be healed, how that in that name you can be saved, how that in that name you can be delivered. When they believed on the Lord and they were baptized and received the Holy Ghost, it said even Simon himself decided to make a change. Jesus, God, had orchestrated a great atmospheric change here in the city of Samaria. He brought an end to what looked to be a stronghold of Satan, what looked impossible. The finger of God came in and in a moment moved minds and moved hearts and broke a great stronghold in that area. And I tell you that lately God has been shifting the environment here at the Pentecostals of Smyrna. God has been shifting and moving and shaking. Some of you, he's been waking up in the middle of the night to pray. Some of you, he's been drawing you here to the church to pray. Some of you, he's been making you unsettled so that you would pray and get on your face. Some of you, he's brought great adversity to your life so that you would be forced to come back to him and draw near to him. Some of you, he's brought great persecution and you think you're about to be snuffed out. But can I tell you tonight, God is shifting the atmosphere to bring a breakthrough, to bring Satan's kingdom down. Several, well, a few years ago now, the Lord gave me a vision. I was here, I was praying, and that back wall opened up. And it was as if there was this hideous spirit that stood over the city of Smyrna and of Rutherford County. And this fast, a bolt of lightning came from the heavens and knocked that principality down. And its crown fell. And the Lord said, if you want, you can go and pick up that crown. You can 
go and claim revival for this city. Now, I've done that as much as I can. But the Lord is ready for us as a group of believers to determine that it is time to pick up His authority. And once and for all, see every stronghold, every principality, every power in our community come down. I pick my title tonight from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1 through 9, you will read where multitudes of devils came against Jesus Christ while he was here on the earth. Continually, he's having to cast out devils, even to the point that in Luke chapter 9, he rebukes them closest to him for a demon-possessed person was brought to them, and they couldn't so much as even break a sweat. They couldn't get it out. They couldn't pray a prayer that, that, would, uh, that, would, that would do anything. And he looks at them and says, How long, faithless and perverse generation, will I be with you? You're going to have to get this for yourself. And he casts the devil out, and he goes on to give a great rebuking for almost a chapter. And right in the middle of it, he says this, he stops, and it's almost odd. He says, and I saw Satan fall from heaven as of lightning. I saw Satan fall from heaven. And he goes on, he finishes what he's saying. And they said, well, Lord, teach us to pray. In the next chapter, he said, teach us to pray. And he gives them the pattern for prayer, the Lord's prayer. He, he begins to show them how to pray. But you will notice that from that point forward in the book of Luke, only two devils make it to Jesus. The disciples begin to have power to cast out devils. The disciples begin to have power to do miracles. The disciples begin to have authority and power in the Spirit. Sometimes the greatest revelation that we as believers need is what Jesus said when he said, I saw Satan fall. Did you hear what I said to you tonight? You're fighting an adversary that no matter how organized he may look, no how strong he may seem, no matter how great the trial may be, I saw Satan fall. He is a defeated foe. Too many of us are propping up a defeated stronghold in our mind. Paul told the believers in Romans this way. He said, some of you are living dead to sin, allowing sin to have dominion over your bodies. But I tell you, where sin did abound, grace doth much more abound. I don't have to read the back of the book tonight to know who wins. I can read the front of the book. It said that the woman's seed shall crush the serpent and he would be destroyed. Prophesying of Jesus Christ crucified crushing Satan at his crucifixion and his resurrection. I know Satan is defeated. The devil is defeated. I've come to tell you tonight, when all hell breaks loose in your life, when everything looks like it's going wrong, step back and say, I saw Satan fall. I wish somebody would get the revelation. I'm not going to preach much longer or talk much longer. I'm telling you, the devil is defeated. You do have victory. You do have power. I wish someone who needed a healing would throw their hand up and say, I saw Satan fall. We cannot be defeated. We cannot be destroyed. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. How do I know? I saw Satan fall. By my stripes you are healed. How do I know? I saw Satan fall. You can be delivered. How do I know? I saw Satan fall. You can have victory. How do I know? I saw Satan fall. There is an atmospheric change. God is shifting things. He is desiring to make disciples. And Jesus said of his end time disciples that these signs would follow them. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. How? Because Satan has fallen. Several weeks ago, I endeavored to preach to you. 
the equation, mathematical formula or equation for a Pentecostal experience, and God divinely interrupted that service. But where I was going was that I'm hungry for a Book of Acts church. I said a Book of Acts church. Now, I'm afraid what you heard was I said an Acts chapter 2 church. I'm glad for Acts chapter 2 where the Holy Ghost was poured out. But I don't want just Acts chapter 2. I want Acts chapter 3 where the lame man was healed and Jesus was preached. I want Acts chapter 4 where they prayed with such fervency that the earth was shaken. Acts chapter 5 where they had all things in common and gave sacrificially to the work and advancement of God. Acts chapter 6 where they couldn't be persecuted or destroyed. Acts chapter 8 where he poured out on the Gentiles in Samaria the work of God. Acts chapter 10, where Cornelius and his house was saved. Acts chapter 16, where the whole earth was shaken and those that were bound were set free. I want a book of Acts church, not just an Acts chapter 2 church. But this will only happen when we realize the revelation that Satan has fallen. Pastor preached to you this morning that it is time to be strong and courageous. I'm telling you, pick up that courage and advance the kingdom of God. For that that looks like it should make you afraid is a fallen, defeated adversary. Can I tell you tonight that not only has Satan fallen, but if we will get in one mind and one accord tonight, before we leave this place, he'll be so fallen, he can't get back up. He's not going to get back up and have any more power and authority in your life. I tell you tonight, if you're addicted, you can't be free. I don't care what the addiction is. If you're addicted, you can't be free because I saw Satan fall. If you're sick, you can't be healed because I saw Satan fall. I need a man of faith right now. Brother Stubbs has endeavored to start a work called Celebrate Recovery. It's a needed work. And ever since he started it, the enemy's been attacking him. I need somebody to become standing right now for my brother. Come on, Brother Graves. That's it right now. Satan's going to fall. Satan's going to fall by the power of the Word of God, by the authority of the name of Jesus. Satan, you are defeated. Every addicted sinner in this city.